look at this matchup. They, <laughs> they got, <laughs> he got the matchup. He just dodged, by the way. He got the matchup. He just dodged. That's pure luck, in my opinion. They have the red Alvin play main shadow facts. <laughs> Am I the luckiest person? Yes, you are. Against the green dwarven player Keith Pets on the other side. So, unfortunately, he chose to map Sakura Forest, but let's not remake this anymore. He wanted originally also the map Forts of Aizen, so it's fine. We can go for the map Sakura Forest in the game number three if we will reach this point. We have an early barracks coming up for the Dwarven player after the first mineshaft for Keith Pets, who is a Turkish player, a BFMU2 player, who is also now, luckily for us, participating in the Rise of the Witch King event. It's always nice to see the numbers going up in those events. It's a 64 player tournament in Rise of the Witch King in 2022, which makes me kind of very proud to have this many competitive people, or at least interested in competition in Battle for Middle-earth games, even in 2022, even almost after 20 years after this games got released. To my lawn trees, into the barracks, into the pikemen opening for me, Shadow Fags. So that means me, Shadow Fags is planning to creep a layer or two, he might choose to creep the Vork layer here, or this one at the bottom right side, but he might also just creep the Troll layer at the top right side. So we can take a look into the barracks. Does he have a waypoint? Yeah, he has a waypoint to this location. I'm assuming he will be creeping a Vork layer, because it might be a little bit too late now for the Troll layer. Pikeman opening for Dwarves too. Dwarven weakness is the lack of mobility, right? They, have like ex they are extremely sloppy and so slow to move from one location to another location. And for that reason, you are heavily relying on your Mineshaft connections. And that's the only possible way you can play this matchup. However, the reason why Elves are so good against Dwarves, because Elves like to camp, right? They will eventually have multiple arches in one location and shoot you down way before you can reach to the settlements. That means you will take so much damage before you can make it to any of these Malon trees, which will give Elven player even more and more experience points and also power points. Okay, easy creeping from Keith Pets, very good. He's adapting also quite fast. Normally, PvP2 players are using the buff to creep, but he didn't. He's also uh, made sure of is creeping a work layer at the bottom right side. Remember, creeping a troll layer is more valuable because you get more money, and also you will get the chance to capture this in at the bottom left side. Benzi is in the building. Benzi, welcome to the second series of the day, my friend. In the best of three between Major of X against Keith Pets. You missed the games between Major of X against any Brandy. But it's okay. We will have more and more series happening today. After this series, we can hopefully be able to get the games between Ghost, who is a you know like an old Rise of the Witch King expert player, against King Mustafa. That's gonna be also pretty awesome. Okay, creeping action is going on. That's the second creep, but the builder. Hold on a second. Hey, 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 Keith Pets, Keith Pets, Keith Pets. No Yabada Badu, he was greedy. Dwarves are greedy creatures, as you guys know. They wanted to steal the money, but elves are stabbing him in his back. And actually, Major of X is creeping a lot. Like, he, that's gonna be the third work layers Major of X is creeping. Double Pikeman opening just to creep as much as potentially possible. It will only leave the work layer at the top left side and a troll layer at the top right side, remaining on the field. That's gonna be the first push, but elves are kinda prepared. Look at the situation, that's what I'm talking about. If you can see them before they can reach to a certain point, which by the way would be a situation like here, then you can prepare yourself. Now they're gonna be in a perfect situation, double archers split it, and they can shoot them down. That means they will take so incredible much damage before they can make it to the Malone tree. He needs to use rallying call now if he wants to be able to survive. Aggressive stance too, that makes them even more squishy, you know? Rallying Call is gonna be used, but look, that's what I'm talking about. Look how much damage they take. That's such a big weakness of the Dwarven faction. He needs to now try his best to build multiple mineshafts close to the open inside. But that's easier said than done, because he lost one of his builders. That means he needs to get another one for 500, which is a lot of money early on. The Malone tree here is gonna be found. He's defending quite nicely. He will, he will only lose one single Malone tree against buffed units. It was two Guardians and one Pikeman. It's not a big deal. Uh, but also this one might be still taken down. Lorian Warriors are trying to defend. But Guardians, if they get the chance, howsoever, to attack your buildings, they will be hitting like a truck. So easy peasy lemon squeezy. And the structure has been taken down. Lancer transition now from Major of X. 
It's a good situation for harassment because now what you can do is keep your infantry army, your archers, for defensive purpose only, right? You can only camp with them and use your lands at the same time to snipe down those mineshafts, trample down those guardians, and mainly deal economical damage to your opponent. Um, in this card, we have actually a new category for the tournament, which has many, many text channels, you know, for each group. So every player is able to get your uh, get the games done much, much easier this way. There is a replay section in the rule section. In the rule section of the text channel in this card, you have also the link for the bracket. So also you can just type in the chat exclamation mark bracket. It will bring you to the website in which you can see the standings of each player of each group stage and just have an understanding about who's going to advance to the next round. To the Alrighty, so nice one. He will be able... Hobbitses. Hobbits. Sneak your little Hobbitses. Oh, they're out. They're out. Okay, they're able to enter the mineshaft. That's fine. But the mineshaft is going to be taken down now. Actually, he has two Hobbits and three Guardians. But he needs more and more pikemen. Because Major of X is now recruiting more and more Lancers. And look at the situation. With this one pikeman and one archer all alone, he's able to block this entire pathway. Right? That's pretty good for him. He has also the Malon tree right in the middle. Very good positioning from Major of X. This way, I mean, this Malon tree is not going to remain on the field for a long time. But what it does is it provides you with additional vision control. This way you can see the enemy units coming from the middle area. So now you have control at the top side, control in the mid side. The only pathway you need to control now is the bottom area. And that's it right but there comes a big commitment does he have vision on that let me check yes he has vision now because of the malone tree but you cannot let them enter that easily does he have pikemen though it's one pikeman only that's very greedy from keith Bass. i believe one pikeman for this many units is just not enough you need more than that you, you need more than that maybe gloin could be also a nice hero you know gloin is pretty beefy quite tanky also king brand is not a bad choice there is a harassment going on. The Malone tree is still remaining on the field, of, you know, for some reason. That's a huge Elven army. Rallying Call has been used defensively. You have two arches only, though. Three. Two. Two arches only. That's not enough. Oh, beautiful trample. Rallying Call is going to be used now from Keith Pads. He's level one only, but King Brain has no trouble however to level up to level two. Now he has the slap shot available. He can cast it and use it. And the more you clump you are, the more effective the shot is going to be. He's going to use it on the archers behind, that's good. But that's the big punishment, because if you have only one single pikeman, like he did, all major effects had to do is target those pikemen hard, you know, hard focus them with the archers. And once the pikemen are gone, then you can just commit with the lances. And that was exactly what happened, which caused him to easily defend this area without even losing one of his Malone trees. That's a huge advantage. Some pikemen are hiding, but they are not able to get stealth anymore. Remember the stealth? of the Mifflon um, pikemen of the Elven faction got removed earlier in previous patches. They could also get invisible around the trees, but that's not a thing anymore. 10 power points collected. Haldir is chasing down King Brand, who is almost level 4. He might go for the mist. 525 command points versus 475. But one thing is for sure. If you cannot get a huge lead with Dwarven army, you will fall behind and more behind in long terms. Major of X is looking pretty strong in this game. He has a huge advantage, double well for the faster healing. Malone 3 level 2. This one is also almost level 2. Alvin Wood is going to be his choice. Hmm, Alvin Wood is also not bad, to be honest with you, because again, Dwarven Faction is one of the two factions in the game that has no land, right? They are landless, you know? Men of the West and Dwarves, they cannot use land. Borok, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Welcome, hope you're going to enjoy your stay. Hmm. Oh, man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Look, Heiger, though. He's left alone. But he's fast enough. That's the, that's the good thing about the matchup here for elves. Because in the worst case scenario, you can always run away. And there is nothing that can ever catch to you. Oh, archer battle. Hold on a second. I think Heiger is going to win this, right? Let me check. Level um, 182 range damage. 150. I mean, he's level 1 only. That's why. In HP, 2200. And yeah. Actually, Heiger is going to skill better. With the HP, he will become more tanky. Oh, beautiful trample. <laughs> yeah, Keith Pets needs to definitely get more pikemen on the field. 
those lancers are actually painful to deal with now. No battle wagons all game long either. Double Hall of Warriors. No heroes beside King Brand. Like, maybe, maybe the battle wagon action. Because at this point, as we are talking, Alvin Faction has no way of nullifying enemy leadership bonuses, right? It means one battle wagon with banner could make those guardians way more tanky. This way, they can absorb much more damage. Because my Shadow Facts went for the Alvin Wood and not for the Enshrouding Mist. Yeah, May is kind of playing it too defensively. The Devil to Mindshot is going to be taken down. He's playing too scared. You know, even though he has such a massive lead, but he's kind of not making a move into the opposite. Beautiful Slapshot, by the way. He's not making a counter move to the opposite side. The Mindshot here level 2, that's going to hurt a lot. It's going to drop him down to 500 command points now. And also, Main Shadow Facts has a huge power point advantage. He's destroying the inn, which means no more Hobbits anytime soon for... Keith Bats. Heidi is level 1 only. He will get to level 5 at some point. Just crash a couple of Guardians and you should be good to go. The Malone Tree is remaining on the field. It's so tanky though, however. But the Pikeman will be able to finish it off this time. There is a force of Major Effects at the bottom side. They are able to find every single offensive mineshaft from the opening player Keith Bats. 7 power points in the bank after the Elven Wood already. 15 is going to lead you to the end special summon. And might be the end of the game. Because I believe Dwarven Faction player will have a hard time to deal with those ends. Now we have 550 command points available for Dwarves. But again, no Battle Wagons all game long. And I don't know why not. You know, Battle Wagons can actually be quite important in this matchup. I mean, he's spamming, right, from Double Hall of, Hall of Warriors. But he's getting crushed every single time. That's the power of Elves. Elves against Elves. Uh, elves against Dwarves in long terms. You will get outskilled, army-wise. If also Glorfindel up on the field now. Oh man, 8 power points in the bank, 7 power points away from the end summon. I mean, maybe Major of X is planning to play it a bit more slowly until he gets to the point in which he can finally summon the ends for the siege. Because one thing is for sure, the biggest weakness of the Alvin faction, besides having the worst eco in the game, is also the lack of damage against structures. So they have no siege power with the units, right? I mean, Glorfindel can do some great damage, but... They always struggle when it comes to go for the for the ending, for the for the game's ending, you know. But Keith Patch is gonna call it GG anyway, and that's gonna be the game number one, boys. Major of X gets a W, and he's one win away from deciding this series for himself. Everybody who was betting on Major of X will get some points now, and we're gonna jump right into the game number two. Bro, I'm really wondering when you will open your webcam. I can open my webcam one couple of seconds for you, my friend. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Dude, I look like a homeless person at this point. <laughs> I look like a homeless person. <laughs> Dude. Oh my goodness. Sneaky little hobbitses. Give me my precious. What's theaters, precious? What's theaters? We have the red Engma player, Major of X at the right side, against the green dwarven player, Keith Pets on the left. Dude, I guys, dude, I, I I was feeling so bad the last five days, you know. I was only eating in the, the pandemic, dude. It, uh, it was hitting me like a truck. Do you like Ingmar versus Dwarf Mate? <laughs> Look, he's putting salt on the wand, you know? Because Keith Pets, I believe he doesn't even have experience with the Ingmar faction, let's be real. Because he's very new to the Rise of the Witch King scene, especially in the 1v1 department for the upcoming tournaments. But, <laughs> can you shut up? I don't like this whole game. Oh, oh, <laughs> the salt. Two, three mineshafts into the archery range opening. That's okay against Engma. You can do that. Because most of the time you will have to deal with the Gundabad warriors and pikemen. They are very weak in terms of armor and tankiness. But at some point of the game, and that's pretty early, you will also need some frontline to body block the enemy cavalry. In this case, the wolf riders, for example, to protect your extroverts. There is no heating there, right? Oh, Yoda. Uh, I'm sexy and I know it, dude. Hey, guys, you can all say whatever you want, you know, because my wife is happy with the way I'm looking, okay? You don't, I don't need to be liked by you guys. Come on now. <laughs> we have three meals of the Kingsman. The Gundabad warriors are moving forward. He's also, oh, oh, oh not, way, not this way of creeping. This can be bad, this can be bad, this can be bad. And the guy is like, look, he's going out and saying, Major of X, what have you done? 
<laughs> what am I watching? Mission of X. Even this bold guy isn't happy with the result of the creeping. Now, the builder will get in safety. He's creeping also the walk layer with the extrovers. <laughs> because your wife looks like a dwarven woman, bang this guy. You can say to me whatever you want, but <laughs> let my wife out because she will beat me if I don't protect her. Pikeman's, Pikeman opening from the Hall of Warriors. Rallying Call awaitable. 400 command points in the bank for dwarves and 354 Engmar. And that's obviously a bad thing, right? When you lose a unit like that. Still be careful, man. Look at this Trollmaster guy. He almost got one shotted from the troll again. Or it was so close. Or, or? Can we, can we, one more, one more. Oh. Okay. Mm, I think also King Brain can be quite Im important in this matchup as Dwarves yeah. against Engma. King Brain has a slap shot, which will give you the chance to target the Trollmaster himself. And then you can also deal a lot of damage to him, right? So should be pretty good. Uh, cost efficient, great hero. And also a skilling one, because Engma might get the chance to recruit data on, for example, the Giants from the Spellbook. And if you get King Brain level 7, the Beast Laero will one-shot one of these two giants with one single hit. More creeping action is going on for Major of X. He's creeping a lot. But he's not getting punished for it. You know, he's not getting punished for it. Oh, that's gonna be a big push. And the build has been taken down as well. Okay, that's pretty good for dwarves. Look at that. Build it down. Big push. The mill here is going to be definitely taken down. It means now is the time for key fats to shine. 500 command points for dwarves against 354 Engma player Major of X. He's going to lose a lot now from this push. The mill number one is gone. Yes, he's creeping a lot, but that means he's leaving his sight unprotected. He has no wolf riders. He has nothing to trample down those extrovers. That means extrovers, these extrovers are better than those extrovers, by the way. They will be able to win this fight because they are also able to deal great amount of structural damage. However, you cannot disengage. So when you are being chased down like that, you got to stand in fight because look how much damage you take in return ah he was waiting to regroup with the other units now he will go for the rallying call he's also outnumbering his opponent just stand here and shoot them down we have no waldo no double buff action for Eng oh yes waldo i'm blind but i'm blind he's giving also leadership to the allied you know extrovers okay, that means they have double buff but they are still getting out spammed and also outclassed level two waldo very smart positioning with the all ground stands because he doesn't want to take too much damage but now the counterattack might cause Major of X to not only lose this mill in between the Hall of the Kingsmen, but also eventually one of the Hall of the Kingsmen might be taken down. Remember, the extrovers are also dealing a lot of structural damage. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a snowballing effect of dwarves against Engma. If you get a lead like he did, it's very easy to play dwarves. The dwarves are feeling so incredibly heavy to play, hard to play when you fall behind. But it's the opposite thing when you get a lead. One of the best, if not the best, Noble Infection in the entire game, because at this point of the game, he can now build multiple offensive mind shops. One here, bottom, one in the middle, one in the top side. It means he can constantly pressure 24-7, and Major of X can do nothing about the situation. I believe still that going for the Wolf 10 instead of the second hall of the Kingsman would be a better call, because then you at least get the chance to get Wolf Riders on the field and Wolf Packs. Wolf Packs can one-shot the enemy Pikeman, and Wolf Riders can easily take care of the enemy Extrovers. So after this push, Engmar is dropping down to 250 command points only. He has one single mill remaining on the field. He's, he has six power points in the bank, which might be invested into the Felwind or Snowbind. On the other side, dwarves have nearly five power points collected. The mindshot in the middle is going to be taken down. He has not enough units on the field as we are talking, but he's finally deciding to build the battle guardian. wagon. And dwarven units with double buff are going to be extremely efficient. And you know what also can be good in this matchup? The Demolisher. Don't call me crazy, but the Demolisher is actually so good against Engma because the Engma units have such a low DPS and armor, uh, armor that Demolisher can just trample them down and one-shot all of them. And once you make it to a building, you can one-shot a mill, two-shot all of the Kingsmen, and like five-shot the Fortress. So Demolisher, the only weakness is it's too far away, right? So basically, if you demolish, if you recruit Demolisher here, you cannot put Demolisher inside the mineshaft. That's not possible. <laughs> so you need to walk all the way to this area, which is a long distance for a very small, slow-moving uh, siege weapon like the Demolisher is from the Dwarven faction. 
The Mineshaft will be protected. He's committing now to this fight. There is one Gundabad sneaking through, but the Battle Wagon might be able to take care of that. No problemo. Now we will have a double buffed Warren army for the upcoming fight. That's going to be pretty good. Oh, we have also Pillage. That's why he's getting money. Waldor is level 4, by the way, right? Let me check. Yeah, 4 already. That's pretty insane because level 5 will give him the chance to summon reinforcements. But he's still struggling a lot. I mean, just... Oh, the Builder. The Builder, Builder. Oh, that's bad, though. I mean, you don't want to... Like, you don't want that to happen, right? You don't want to lose a Builder in the Mineshaft to one single Gundabad for here, here, which was randomly sent forward. There is the battle wagon at. He is defending eventually. It needs to be here. Because there comes the commitment. And you cannot really disengage, right? That's not very good. Hey, turn on him. Turn on him. You can burst him down. Oil bottle can be quite nice. King Brain can be quite nice. Mineshot is going to be the first target from Major Effects, which is smart. This way, you can make sure that the opponent cannot bring any more reinforcement, but it looks like he won't be even able to finish it off. 8 power points in the bank. 10 will lead you to the Hobbit Ally's special summon which you can use together with your rallying call. Smart move from him to not use the rallying call yet. And Warchan has been used, right? It means he will have a buff advantage in about 20 seconds from now. Battle Wagon, hold ground stance. Just put hold ground stance on a Battle Wagon. This way, the Battle Wagon won't make anything crazy happen. As for example, running straight into the Pikeman. Baldur is taking a lot of damage. Nine power points in the bank. There comes another army from the middle with another Battle Wagon as support. He's spamming extrovers at this point, and there is nothing from Engmar that can stop them. There is not a single Wolf Rider Battalion, which is so insane from Major of Eggs. I mean, you can see that it's all about decision making. It's about your choices, which you either will be happy about or regret later on. And I believe after this game, Major of Eggs is going to regret his choice to not be building up the Wolf Ten as the second production building instead of the second Hall of the Kingsmen. Because now, we have the Hobbit summon available. Unfortunately for him, he was summoning or using the rallying call before the Hobbits got summoned. I think when you are that close, you can just be patient a bit more and then use the Hobbit summon on top of your own army and buff them all together. But it's fine. 725 command points versus 500. Here's the Orc summon available. The problem with the Orc summon is they will get trampled down by the Battle Wagon the second they get spawned. It's gonna be hard because now he's losing all the production buildings. He has no snowbind to save that. It's going to be definitely taken down. No debuff either. There comes the orc summon. Use oil bottle at least. Use oil bottle. That's the perfect moment to burn them. He's going to use sub hobbit summon on top of the enemy <laughs> summoned. What a fiesta. <laughs> what an absolute clown fiesta. Now we have the reinforcement summon from Valdor behind the enemy extrovers. What a massive fight. The hobbits, they don't enjoy what they are do what they are seeing here, by the way, because summoning them on top of such a on top of such a big army is like a suicide mission. Only the heroes are remaining for the Baggins and also Samwise Gamgee, just like in the film, side by side. Voldor is taking a lot you know a bit damage, but it's he's, he's fine. He's such a great hero too, one of the most cost efficient heroes in the game by far, because he gives you pillage, leadership, and additional unit summon. And all of that for a really laughable price, you know? The mid is going to be taken down behind from the Spikeman. And Dwarves are struggling, though. They are struggling to go for the finishing attack. He's going to use Snowbind to keep this almost level 2 mil protected. The Battle Wagon is taking care of these. And where is this? Oh, he's building now the second Hall of Warriors. I think it's time to recruit heroes, though. I think it's time to recruit King Brand and also Gloin. Gloin can deal insane amount of structural damage. So you can commit and take down even the enemy fortress in a few seconds. Uh, Epicurus, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so 450 command points, but Engmar is somehow able to hold himself in the game. He has level 5 extrovers up on the field. The battle wagons, one of them has the well. The other one is going to have the banner for leadership and also recovery and sustain. The mid is going to be taken down in the front. It's like getting one shot at this point. There is just too much DPS. But I think what he lacks of in this army are Guardians. Like, why would you not recruit Guardians? Trust me on that one. Guardians with double buff can be quite tanky. You know, get some Guardians. He That's the first time I see Guardians on the field. He had only Pikemen and Extroverse all game long. That's a big commitment. What a, what a massive fight. It looks like we are watching Elven Mirror because there is no melee fight, right? It's all range fight at this point. 
The oil bottle, but uh, don't, don't run. He get one shot it, but the pikes are not in position. Don't run. They are so expensive. He was able to save the one with the banner in the well. It means he's good. He's good. He lost one battle wagon, but it's fine. Now is the time for a counter attack. 500 command points for Engmar. He's recovering, actually, trying to build multiple mills. May is a player who doesn't like to give up. He likes to fight until the very end. The mill in the front, almost level 2. This time, Snowbind is not available. It's on cooldown. It means there is nothing that he can do to save this mill. But he keeps spamming more and more units, and Voldor will get a chance very soon to once again summon his Hillman to reinforce him in this fight against Dwarves. Nine power points collected. Voldor is still perfectly fine. He needs to just focus down the mill, but he kills the enemy units first. All ground stance is very smart. These Guardians are ready to fight. 10 power points collected. You know what can also be good in this matchup? Undermine. Undermine can deal burst damage to enemy units. It should be quite fun. Have you ever streamed mods for BFME 2? Um, uh, not really, no. No. I'm more like in the original game, you know? Like the original OG unmodified games. I mean, unmodified is one description, but I like the vanilla games. You know what I'm saying? With no added fancy stuff. Like 20 new factions, 500,000 new units. I just personally don't like that that much. Especially not for what we are doing on this channel. This channel is dedicated to the streams and competition. And I believe hosting competition for a mod with 500 different factions is gonna be quite messy. Uh, 12 power points collected, 950 command points available for dwarves. And 575 command points only for Engma player. He has 10 power points. He might go for the white summon at this point or the frozen lands. Remember, the Frozen Land is the only way Engma can get full leadership and also slow down the enemy units, which is a win-win situation against Dwarves. Dwarves are so sloppy, and you can make them even slower by using the Frozen Land. But the thing is, it's going to delay your 15. So if you don't pick what he did, you could have gone for a, for a Giant Summon with 15. There comes the you know, separation of the army that's very required to deal enough damage to the economy. The mill, one, two, three, is going to be taken down. That's going to drop down every single time. Minus 50 command points for Engmar. He's dropping down to 500. He's going to drop down to 450 now. And Engmar is command points capped. That's a frozen land on the Guardians. Engmar is pushing now for a... Going for a counterattack. Imagine with this army and he would have the Giants. Imagine how impactful this would have been. I don't think that the Dwarven army, as we are talking, has the strength and the possibility to take down those giants fast enough. So he has fa almost 5 power points in the bank. So instead of going for the frozen land, if he would have chosen the giants, I mean, this army backing those giants up, trust me, maybe he would have not been able to finish the game, but he would have been able to deal crazy amount of damage. Okay, he's gonna go for the, for the defense now. The battle wagons are keeping the distance. But the barrage is coming in clutch and wiping out the entire Engmar army. Holy moly. Dude, the barrage is such a great tool. Because it's so good against units and also amazing against structures. So, I like this ability. And now, Engmar is dropping down to 185 out of 650 available command points in total. Now, dwarves can pop off you know engmar is getting so much money from the pillage yes engmar is getting a lot of value from the pillage um very good you know engmar that's the only way engmar can get additional resources remember engmar has no industry no field of fires no scavenger from the spellbook either so if you want to make additional cash you need to have Waldor with his pillage i am the fist of engmar but that's not the only reason why you would recruit this hero he's tanky right he can summon he has 3000 hp this dude right he cannot get one shot by any by all means the pillage, the leadership, is a very sportive and great additional hero to make your army a bit greater. There comes the Orc Special Summon for the defense. We have also Men of Deal up on the field now. They are also pretty good. But the commitment now. You see Mindshot at the bottom side, boys. Mindshot here, Mindshot here. So he's surrounding now the Engmar player from every single location. And there comes the Hobbit Special Summon from the Shire. So we have now the gank. The Felvin has been used to catch those battle wagons. One of them has been taken down. The other one will try to get in safety. One single touch from the pikeman and the battle wagon will get bursted down. The power points are rising to the sky and the battle wagon gives you in total 88 resources for killing it. But as we are talking, Engmar is losing every single production building in the game and now he has no more chance of recruiting any more units anytime soon. The only thing that keeps him alive is this fortress. 
Yes, he has almost a power point. Ah, no, he has Snowbind on cooldown even. That means he cannot even save this Fortress anytime soon, you know? Holy moly. The Battle Wagons, though. I mean, dudes, I, I need to say this game was looking bad for Major of X in the past 10 minutes. But at some point, he was kind of successfully able to defend himself over and over again. Which was giving me kind of a little bit about, you know, a little bit hope. Because I was thinking legit that he can turn this game around. Low-key, but... It was definitely not possible. The the lead was was too huge, and key pets were a great performance with Dwarf Infection against Ingmar in a, in a bad matchup too. I believe that's a, not a very good matchup for dwarves in long terms, but he played really good. We have now this <laughs> Dire Wolf Kennel expansion, so the wolves are coming out for the defense of fortress of the fortress of Ingmar. But yeah, look at this. You see Mineshaft, 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 Mineshaft. Like he's at this point, he's just making a circle around the fortress of his opponent by building hundreds of mineshafts. So the second you deal with one push, there is going to be another push from a different location, and so on. I build from stone and iron. Look, he has barely, units, barely any units on the field. That's the only unit. That's all his army, right? He has Waldor, one pikeman, and almost a dead battalion of pikemen. That's it. But Major of X ain't giving up, boys. He want to fight until the end. And now, that's when you need to realize, okay, I need some siege weapons, or... I need to siege hammers like this one you know and you get like five guardians on the field and commit and this will be the push to win because the siege damage from dwarves is something else right they can deal so much damage to buildings and blow them up in like three seconds the frozen land is available for the next big fight maybe fire arrow can also be a great adjustment for the dps increasement against the buildings but he needs to do that fast, you know? He's kind of playing it too slow. Three battle wagons around this side. We have camp forever. Yeah, like he's saying, are you not going to call I it GG? It's class. over, my friends. Uh, we have Man of the Hill Guardians up on the field. He's building now multiple of the Kingsmen. Major of X is going to fight until the very end. Hey, Super Banjo and Yamada, welcome. Thanks for tuning in, guys. He has the chance to summon the Hillman one more time very soon. It's like a, not like a, I was expecting a shorter cooldown, but this actually has like a really long cooldown. I don't know what the cooldown is, maybe like three minutes, maybe four minutes, maybe only two and a half minutes. Okay, he's not going to say a word, he's going to leave, because he knows the game is over. You have the red man of the west player, make sure of X at the bottom side, against the green elven player, Keith Bad at the top side. So it's a clash between good and good. Remember, there was once an alliance between men and elves, but this alliance turned into a fight, into a war. And here we will get the chance to see a fight between Aragorn against Elrond. The person who raised Aragorn was actually Elrond, kinda. He was helping Aragorn a lot. Now Aragorn is like, I'm the new king, and you gotta obey me. And Elrond is like, no sir, you can't. High dodge, I think. Two, three Malon trees coming up for elves. On the other side, we see farm, farm and a very early barracks. And I, I, you know, I believe that's gonna be a pikeman opening, yes. Why? Because uh, on this map, going for a soldier rush is not very effective. And if you are wondering why, because the distance you gotta travel is actually pretty long. And that's only if you move through the middle, right? If you hug the wall here and you wanna go all the way around, look the distance. You gotta walk like for a minute before you can make it to the opposite side. So that's why early barracks into a very early pressure with one soldier is not going to be very impactful on this map, I believe. That's why pikeman opening and then soldier next, because then what you can do is you can creep, get level 2, get money and get experience, and then you can combine them with the soldier, and then you can go for the push with the rallying call. This is like a very simple opening. We have seen this like many, many times in also previous versions of the patch, 2.02. And it's pretty solid, you know, it's not the best, it's not the worst, it's pretty solid. There is not enough counterplay to that. It's always gonna deal some sort of damage. It won't be ever really bad to do that. Easy creeping action is going on. Um, in the meantime, Elven player is actually building two, three Malone trees into the stable opening. Okay, stable into two Lancers. But he needs a barracks. Very soon. Rexa, welcome, my dude. Thanks for tuning in, Rexa. And welcome just in time for the final game of the series between Major of X and Keith Bats in the group stage of the Spring Tournament for Rise of the Witch King. 
he's leading forwards the pikes and soldiers they are going up and that's the thing now the pikes they have the freedom to do whatever they want there is nothing that can deal with them the barracks is super delete it means at least at bare minimum one of the malone trees is going to be taken down nation of x needs to go though go 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 <laughs> okay does he have pikemen though no he has no pikemen yet but he's gonna have pikemen now and that's gonna be a counter to the lancer start that's a perfect situation for Major Effects, by the way, because he will now get the chance to also capture the signal fire in the middle. This push is not going to be defended anytime soon. He needs to now give up at least one of the Malone trees, if not two, because the archers are not going to make it on the field anytime soon, right? They, they can even buff this and go for, like, the barracks if they want to. And also the positioning is very important, because in BFME 2, they are not building the Malone trees this far away from the fortress, you know? Because in BFME 2, the Malone trees are made of paper. He will get one-shotted in every single situation. Oh, nice one. Trample. Look at the positioning of the Gondor Knight. It's uh, Gondor Soldiers. It's annoying to target them. And they, have you, they are using the whole ground plus shield wall. They are so tanky now. But two Lancers should be easy peasy. And look at this. The second Malone tree is going down. That's a really bad start. The Archers are finally tuning in, but... You gotta, you gotta kill the pikemen first, then you, your Gondon, uh, your lances can actually clean up. That's a very smart move here from Major of X, by the way. He was not using the rallying call right off the bat. He's now using it now to not only get more DPS, but also to get more armor to survive those Lorian archers a bit longer. This game is looking very good for Major of X already. The great call, the great units. And blind countering the enemy start. Very, very good. Very, very good. And look at this, man. They can still keep going, by the way. They can still keep dealing damage. That's why Keith Betts has to build now multiple offensive Malone trees. Because he knows I cannot keep the Malone trees around my fortress protected. At least not for now. The counter, double barracks and archer range. And the farm will be surrounded. Commit, commit. Aggressive stance and burst it down. They are also buffed, by the way, from the rallying call. That's why they are able to deal so much damage. And now is the question, how much counter damage can Keith Bats possibly deal to Major of X to turn this game around? Because he's not done yet. He keeps going. He keeps dealing damage. KC Keen, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Hope you're going to enjoy your sleep. He's creeping a lot too. He's creeping this. He's creeping that. He was also creeping this at the beginning of the game. So three war players against zero creeps so far for the album player. And this also displays, obviously, in the command point, power points department. So we have five power points already for Major of X against only three power points for Keith Pets. The farm is going to be taken down, though. That's good. He's doing a good job with the Lancers. Now it's important to keep them alive. Don't trample into the Pikemen. Good micro here from Keith Pets. That's good. And he's also kind of back in the game, right? He's not doing too bad now. Double Rex. Uh, I don't know if this is a good thing, I believe. But you need also our... Um, Gondonites. Is this the latest Age of the Ring patch? No, it's uh, Rise of the Witch King. Normal, vanilla, Rise of the Witch King, my friend. Who is Keith Pets? Um, he's a BFME 2 player. He was also participating in the BFME 2 event. He was actually pretty good. And now he's also able to play in the Rise of the Witch King event. That's pretty good though. I mean, he's winning against Major Effects. I mean, not winning, but it's pretty even. It's pretty impressive. All right, so Pikes, they, have, they won't be able to find this Malone tree, though. I mean, he has multiple Malone trees around this area. And my, hey, guys, my, hello, can somebody hear me? <laughs> my desktop turned off. My monitor turned off. One second, I gotta fix it. <laughs> I don't see anything. Can can you guys? I'm watching from my phone. Can you see? Can you hear me at least? Am I am I still live? Okay, okay, it fixed. Like, the, I need to buy a new cable, you know, from my PC to my monitor. It's like 
Sometimes it's just turning off. Sorry, guys. Sorry. But thanks for letting me know. I appreciate that. All right. So what is happening? Mission effects is looking strong when I take a look into the minimap. And when we take a look into the command points department, it's not looking very good for Mission effects. I mean, he's dropping down to 375 command points only, right? That's not a lot. He has a level 2 farm and 2 level 1 farms. That's pretty much it. They have also almost no command points available for Keith pads. So they are both down in the command points department so expanding is the key now at this point you gotta you gotta replace those farms and also the malone trees as quickly as you can eight power points collected for keith pads and man have 10 power points so now here's the chance to go for the lone tower for example i believe lone tower can be quite nice against elves because elves again they are lacking off the damage against buildings in the lone tower with archers inside or rangers now can be quite efficient and when you you can place it here for example right you can place it here or maybe even here, here would be quite important or great because then you can block this entire pathway. Your opponent will have a trouble to walk through this area. But I would always be using it, if you know, in my personal opinion, defensively. Which gives you also a much easier time to defend it. When you build it offensively, it can be destroyed way easier. Oh, bad trample. Oh my goodness, he took so much damage. He has three lances, but one of them is almost down. Uh, Lone Tower is going to be now placed. Where, 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 where? He's placing it actually offensively. But what is this tower going to do there? That's the big question, you know? That's the big question of the day. Maybe you guys have an answer to me in the chat. What is this tower going to achieve? I don't think this tower is going to achieve anything because he has no units inside. He has nothing to camp here to protect it. And the Alvin player can do what he does. He can just ignore that completely. And uh, like a DOS27, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. It's a lone tower indeed. <laughs> it's a lonely tower all of a sudden in a, in a random area for no reason. If you tried to turn it off, uh, off and on again, no. It has nothing. I mean, my monitor gets uh, power. It's about the connection between it, between my monitor and my PC. You know, the cable. And that's the one which is damaged. Not the power cable. Chewing his monitor cable. Hell no, brother. The things are so expensive in Germany too, you know what I'm saying? You want to buy a cable, you got you to gotta invest like almost 50 bucks for it. It's kind of crazy. Like in Germany, when something is broken, it's better to buy a new one other than buying some replacement to repair it, you know? Haldir is actually left alone. What is Haldir doing there, my dude? You cannot just go out like that solo. The stable is finally coming up for me, sure of X, and he needed that. I believe he would have done more stuff with the stable than archer range. He's creeping the troll layer, which is one of the last remaining creeps on the map. He was already creeping this one at the bottom left side. So now we have only this layer, the work layer. That's all about it. Elm is a great hero to counter the enemy lancers. And also he will give you money when he's level 4. Right, that's pretty good. He's like a Voldor uh, from the Man of the West faction, but only for cavalry. He cannot summon reinforcement, but he has spear throw, at least. Haldir, Haldir. Pikes are dealing a lot of damage to heroes, as you can see and tell. That's one Rohan spearman, but they, uh, they have such a crazy DPS against heroes. Haldir might be in trouble. Does he have heal from the spellbook? Yes, sir. He has heal. Turn now and fight them with the, with the sword. They should be able to win this fight. In the meantime, oh, Keepat is going to say thank you very much for the creep. He's going to be securing now the creep for himself, which means free money. Heal is going to be used now on Haldir to keep him alive. Eoma is taking a bit of damage, but he should be fine. Spear throw is not available yet. He has gotten zero experience so far. The Malone tree is going to be taken down. We have 600 command points in total for elves and 525 for men. Stable for the Gondor Knights, but he cannot recruit them because he doesn't have command points available for that. Multiple pikemen just for defense, chilling and doing nothing. Three battalions. That's a lot of command points he's just wasting. Yes, one Gondor Knight with leadership of Elma. He's level 2 now. Remember, level 4 is going to be the time to shine for the Horse Lord of Rohan because he will make bank for me, Shadow of X. And tomorrow is going to be an interesting day with girlfriend and a friend. Make my ego skyrocket. <laughs> oh, okay, Mastrovich. Do it. Your girlfriend tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. She's going to be the most satisfied girlfriend in the planet, my friend. She will not leave you alone for one single second because she will be so scared that any other girl can actually pick you up. And by the way, like a DOS27 right after the follow with the primers for the first time subbing to the channel. What a hero, my friend. Thank you so much for the huge support. Really means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you. 
525 command points only and the lone tower is still here <laughs> Dude, that, that's what i don't understand like it's a 10 power point investment right that's not that's like a lot of power points you need to invest for that and that is now staying alone there for no reason maybe you can make a line imagine this tower is remaining when this is available again you can like literally make five towers in a, in a straight line you know protect these lines. so you have not one single lone tower which is useless but five single lone towers which are not lonely anymore being useless a uh, quick aragon thanks for the follow appreciate that we're gonna enjoy your stay thanks for the follow 625 command points now for men and we have 600 command points for elves. The yes, Gondor Knights, they are obviously stronger than the Revender Lancers, but Lancers of the Elven faction are a bit faster. That means they can always disengage when they want to. Elma is almost level 4. What is the level of Haldir, I'm wondering? I don't see Haldir on the field anymore. Did he actually die? Did I miss him? Maybe I did. I don't see him. But what is this army? You cannot send them out like that unprotected. We have now Rangers, which are better than Lorien Archers. But there is no transition into the barracks level 2 yet. He has double barracks level 1. And he has also the momentum, right? He has the Gondonites, the stronger cavalry with leadership, which Alvin faction player doesn't have. Oh, beautiful trample from Major of X. You can even fight this pikeman maybe with double buff. Level 4 is unlocked. It means money, money, money every time you kill enemy units. That's the last remaining creep is gone now. 11 power points available from the spellbook of Men of the West. There is a counter attack happening with the rallying call being used on these, on these units. But the only one that can deal damage are those pikemen. And they will need ages to deal economical damage. Hide this back on the menu, boys. He's level 3. Level 5 is required for, le for leadership. Remember, Man of the West faction is the one faction that has zero way of nullifying enemy leadership bonuses. Which is kind of ironic to me because Man of the West has like 5 heroes that can give you leadership. But not a single hero that can negate enemy leadership, you know? So basically, Elma can give you leadership. Theodin, Boromir, Faramir, you know, Aragorn. Everyone is giving you leadership, but there is no debuff. And remember, in Rise of the Witch King, you can have only one leadership active at the same time. So elves can use Mist. Uh, even Engmar or Dwarves can use the Mighty Reach from King Dean. But man has no debuff. Malone Tree is going to be taken down. Level 2. Arrow Volley is going to be chosen, which is... Uh, not easy to hit, to be honest with you guys. Warsuk, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Big Fang Shanks, uh, binged all your YouTube content and downloading with me one again because of you got a spot how I can. Thank you very much, my friend. You being in the chat and following the channel really means a lot already. And thanks for the primers once again. I'm doing good, my friend, Ibrahim. Thanks for asking, appreciate that. You know, today is a special day because today is the first time we stream the tournament game between, you know, in the group stage between 64 players. And that's the second series of today. We will have much more to watch, to stream, to cast in the following days. Until the round of 16, in which only 16 of the best players are going to be left. For the final stage of the event. And remember, whoever makes it to the top, top 10 spot is going to get some cash prizes. The number one player is getting $600 in total, which is a lot of money for playing Battle for Middle Earth games in 2022 and all of that once again i cannot keep saying it enough uh, it's only possible because of Optian humanity who is the sponsor of this event he was giving me the 1300 dollars that's the reason why we are able to host such an event the farm is going to be eventually taken down but make sure effects is paying attention eight power points collected i missed the arrow volley and there is yet another lone tower useless special summon like what is he trying to do the lord of the rings in the two towers watching from brazil come on my friend thanks for tuning in bilbo thank you thank you oh faramir look at him guys he's trying to show his quality is there a tournament schedule unfortunately not alex it's very hard to schedule in a in a very old game Everybody who's playing this game is, you know, obviously from different time zones. They have a different lifestyle. One is working, the other one is going to school, one is shifting. So it's really hard to set up a game schedule and tell you, okay, we are live every day from this to this. And today, this person is going to play. Tomorrow is going to play this game. That's not possible. We tried it already. It's like very unpredictable what can happen. And it's unreliable, unfortunately. I would love to, but it's unfortunately not possible. 10 power points collected. I mean, again, the best way of staying up to date about the upcoming streams, the matches, is always Discord. 
Building supplies are here. Watching from Greece, I'm happy people are playing this gem in 2022. Very, very happy. I mean, thank you so much. I mean, forevermore, you can also join the multiplayer scene. You can also join. What we need the most are more players. Because I would love to, in 2023 maybe, host a, play, a big tournament. Even a bigger one. You know, like 256 players maybe. You know, why not? It's possible. And if you guys have time, I mean, time is very important, of course, that you can spare to play the games online. Trust me. The most important thing is to get more people to play the game. Uh, level 1, Faramir. Level 2 is going to unlock the arrow, uh, not arrow volley, the warning arrow. Sorry. Um, oh, the builder has been sniped down. Elves are actually kind of pushing back a little bit. He's completely ignoring these towers. They have no even, not even arches inside of that. 12 power points in the bank for main shadow effects, but he's losing map control. He's we down now to 500 command points only. He has a stable level 2, though, for the Rohirrim warriors. Rohirrim are better than Gondonites. On the other side, we have in total the Rohirrim Summon. I missed the Rohirrim Summon, by the way. Holy moly. I was checking the wrong guy also. 875 command points for Mishra of X. He has such a huge army. Now he's building even battle towers. There is a difference, by the way, between this Rohan um, battle tower and this one. This one is more tanky, guys. You can see this one has 2500 HP. And this one has only 1500 HP. So killing a normal summon tower is way easier. A normal build tower is way easier than the special summon tower from the spell book. The Faramir is running for his life. The, the reason why this is a good ability, by the way, is you can use it on, on for example, Hadir, and you can slow him down this way. The Gondonites are doing a phenomenal job with Elma, level 6. They are killing so many Malone trees left and right. He is building an army worthy of the White Tree. The tower guards are looking sexy and also more dangerous. Look at their shields, boys. They have the biggest shields in Middle-earth. Rohirrim! Thanks to the raid show. Hoş geldiniz. Arkadaşlar sefalar getirdiniz. Keyfets, Türk bir arkadaşımız oynuyor şu anda. E, 1300 dolarlık turnuva düzenliyoruz biz. Eyvallah kardeşim. E, Elma level 6. And that's the one reason why those Vivenda lances, they cannot keep up with the Gunner Knights. That's not possible. Erovale almost back up, question mark. No, but he has the end special summon. Okay. So, dude, the towers, they are tilting me. <laughs> I don't know why, but they are tilting me. Okay, so we have the Mirkwood Archer coming up very soon. That's good. That's a very strong transition into a stronger army. Arexis, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Means a lot. Do you know Turkish? I'm Turkish, my friend. I'm Turkish guy. I'm living in Germany, but I'm Turkish. That's a that's a decent elven army. I mean, it's quality over quantity, guys. So they have leadership, this Mirkwoods, with Haldir being around. And if they can back up those ends, the amount of damage you can actually deal could be crazy. So you should be prioritized the level 3 farm. That should be your prior, you know, your main priority. But it's hard for them to reach this point. Let's see if Arrow Volley back up. It's almost back up to a big commitment. But Man of the West also has a huge army. Warning Arrow has been used on the on the on the tree, but it does like zero damage to, to trees, to ends. And that's gonna be a good fight because the Mirkwoods are in a perfectly fine spot. It's hard for the Man of the West player to reach to this point. Now the Gondor Knights are coming for a trample, but he has only one Gondor Knight. He will get slowed down as they are charging. And again, this Mirkwoods, they don't care about Gondor Knights. He will also kill them. He has been used now from the Elven player as well as from the Man of the West player. The ends, they gotta shoot the farms and stop shooting down the units. In the meantime, there is like one pikeman doing nothing. The towers are at least giving him vision. Actually, look how much vision he has from these two towers. Maybe it's a genius and new meta. No, it's not. Uh, farm is going to be taken down the level 2. It means minus 75 command points. But one of the ends has been taken down. Does he have rebuild from the spell book? The answer is no. Looks like he want to save up for the 25. The Man of the West army is actually able now to kill the... Oh, they were actually kind of inside each other. They are both remaining on the field. One shot is all it takes to kill this farm. Elma is looking to get into the back line. There are no more pikemen or not enough pikemen remaining. They get more Mirkwoods now coming to reinforce the Elven army. Uh, one ranger was able to survive. He has fire arrows now purchased, which also means more DPS against those ends as they are very vulnerable. Elma, Elma, he has no heal. He has no heal. Elma is going to get away just barely. The tower guards are diving in. They are tanky, yes. But they, can they tank enough those Mirkwoods? I don't think so. The ends have no more time left in Middle-earth. And that's going to be the end of the push. And that's a Lone Tower summon, which was finally useful. <laughs> that's the third Lone Tower. And the only one which was useful until now. 
has the ivory tower too which will give you the entire vision now he sees everything for like 30 seconds he knows every single placement of this malone trees which would mean actually a lot on a map like jungles or farad getting this information will give you the chance to found, find those malone trees much easier to destroy oh, ready here what version of this game is it nasgi that's the version 2.02 version 8.5 it's the most recent patch version of the patch 2.02 which is a community patch fan patch because there. as you know uh, there is no active development going on in pfme games generally so everything Gondor. since 2006 is actually fan meat yeah yeah you can do that boss mix yeah when when you construct a malone tree and it's it's zero person oh, if you can target that in the very same time and you can also definitely shut him down, you know? Come on, on three. Eight, 900 command points now for the man of the West player. 900 command points, he has tower guards. He has elite archers from the archery range. With fire arrow purchase. That's the strongest infantry you can actually get as man of the West faction. And finally, we see the marketplace for even a greater amount of resource income. The Grand Harvest is going to give you additionally 15% more money, which at this point of the game would mean a lot. We have Glorfindel on the field now. That's good. Glorfindel is... Oh, but the Mirkwood, they are running it down in full battalion. That's painful, dude. Oh, that's really painful. And Major Effects is kind of camping a little bit. I don't know why he's camping when he has such a great lead. Maybe he's waiting for the next Rohirrim summon to go for a big commitment. Who knows? But the Mirkwoods, they are, they are painful when you lose them like that. Dude, they cost, what, 800 each? For one single battalion, you gotta keep in mind that Rohirrim costs less. They are almost as expensive as a Knight of Dolam Roth battalion. And if you lose them like that, it's so painful too. Six power points in the bank. He will be unlocking the Tom Bombadil special summon. 950, almost full command points. 700 for elves. He's like 12 away from his 25, which can be flat, right? You can use flat. Perfect layout, by the way. You see this layout, guys? You use flat here. Barak's gone, Barak's gone, farm level 3 gone, archer range level 2 gone. Is he selling them? Oh, I was scared for a second, but it's Boromir, the captain of Gondor, trying to see the glory days of Gondor once again. Erowale is going to be available for the next fight. What is the level of Hygir? It's level 6. Level 8 is required, however, to stun. And remember, men of the West faction, as we are talking, has no fear resistant. You gotta get Gandalf to level 5. Or a statue for the fear resistance. Big commitment. Big trample. Big trample. Big trample. He doesn't even die. Arrow volley. Arrow volley. Arrow volley. Big air stun. He has a boom. Arrow volley doesn't even hurt. Them. Does he have heavy armor? No, they don't die. This Rohirrim summon, dude. What the heck was that? They are running. What? Did you guys see? They were running into the pikeman. Level 2 with Hydra leadership. And they received zero damage. How? How is this possible? They should have been all dead by now. Is this because they have double buff from Elma and, Ro and the Glorious Cha or the Glorious Call? Oh my goodness, what the heck? How did they not die, bro? Hydra is trying to escape Tom Bombadillo special summon. Sonic Song them. Sonic Song them on their face. Boom! Sonic Song. Plus four, plus four, plus four. Every time you kill enemy units because of pillage of Elma. Glorfindel can only watch. He has gathered zero experience since the time he joined the battlefield. 16 power points, but you cannot get to the 25. Gondor calls for eight. And Rohan will enter and Hyldir is dying to Faramir who is finally able to show his quality level almost 6 which will unlock his leadership by the way for infantry it's pretty important because he has only Elma which only gives you who only gives you leadership to cavalry right so Faramir is gonna sport on one more sonic song on your face what are the power points the power points are looking juicy six power points away from the 25 but we might not be even able to reach this point take a look into the minimap at the bottom left side of your screen man of the west is in cave pads idiot's game in major effects is going for offensive gg and that's it ladies and gentlemen cave pets will lose the best of three against major effects in a 2-1